Good morning. Morning, Facebook. If you're uh, tuning in, we're uh, beer about it, as you can tell by the uh, fancy backward shirts that we have here. Uh, we're your hosts. I'm Derek. This is Chris. Good morning. Episode 9, live from Growler Cafe, as you can see with the backwards GC behind us. Nine weeks, dude. That's crazy. Yeah, we're nine weeks in. Yeah, it's uh, kind of crazy. So good morning, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Um, as usual, we'll just kind of like uh, allow people to kind of come into the video here before we get started drinking some beer. I think we've got a few things to ch chat about. Um, I wanted to say thank you so much again. We continue to see growth with the, with the cafe's videos and uh, and and just to kind of see things grow has, has been a blessing for us. And so we appreciate you guys. So keep go keep it going. Right. Um Desiree, good morning. Been a long time. Um, and so, uh, real quick, and we, we always go over this at the beginning here. Um, you know, share, like, the thumbs up. We, we see all those things. It helps us kind of spread out our audience a little bit. The more action we get on our thing, Facebook kind of keeps track of all that stuff. So, if you guys feel free to please do all those things, we appreciate it. Also, um, maybe to clear up some sharing issues, I know that I learned a little bit of, a little bit about sharing and how to do that. I was a little bit like, I don't know if I want to just post this on my feed necessarily, but... Sharing is caring. Sharing is caring, and <laughs> and it's not like you have to blast it out to everybody on your page. I know that's, you know, like I said, it's not something that I like to do, but occasionally I'll find people that I know. Like recently I'm like really into podcasts and I'm listening to lots of stuff, and not everybody wants to hear those or see those things on my page, so I'll just like message people those shares. So if you know somebody that's out there that's really into beer or would appreciate some of the knowledge that you hear about, you know, just going to share, you can go down to Messenger and you can pick the people that you want to share it to. So that will help us spread as well. So if you needed some clarity on that, I know I did and I wasn't real clear about that. Please feel free to do that. I don't think he's talking you out of sharing it on your page either. So, you know. <laughs> right. Do that. But yeah, like de definitely, if you have somebody specific that you want to share it with, like share it with them so that they see it. Uh, totally. Good morning, guys. Madi, good morning. I saw that you just tuned in. So, uh, Right. So uh, real quick, we got a couple things to go over here. Um, sharing was one of the things on my list, so we got that out of the way. Yep. Uh, another thing, do you want to talk about this or want me to talk about this? The uh, St. Jude's? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we are starting an event on the 15th of April. It's a fundraiser for St. Jude's a Hospital in collaboration with uh, Oregon State University and Pacific University out of Portland. Um, these guys um, are, are coming together with us and Conversion Brewing here in town to basically raise as much money as they can for St. Jude's. A lot of you guys know who they are, so I'm not going to go into who St. Jude's are, but uh, Jude's uh, Children, yeah. uh, the Children's Hospital, um, and it's, a, it's an awesome organization. So between 1 and 5 o'clock, we'll be donating 10% of all of our proceeds during that time, all food and beer sales, um, as well as Conversion. And we got Vertigo Brewing in, in Hillsboro to donate a keg, which will be 100% of all the proceeds of that keg will be going to it as well. So Yeah, that's super cool. Yeah. So once again, Saturday, April 15th, from 1 to 5 o'clock, Growler Cafe in Lebanon, Oregon, and Conversion right across the street. So you can hit two different spots, find out what we're doing here in town, um, and also donate some money. I mean, we're going to be giving 10% of everything to them. And yeah. We're, we're excited, to, excited to do this with them. So it's going to be busy. So prepare to come in and stand up. There's going to be a lot of students uh, and a lot of people from the community who are going to be supporting the event. So come and hang out. Totally. Grab a beer, grab something to eat, and hang out. So yeah. Yeah. Thank you to Matt at Conversion, by the way, yeah. to, to being part of this because this community is really growing. And with them opening and, and uh, you know, just it's, just it's just great to be able to get the community together to do an event. And this is one of the first things we've done with them. So. Amen. Josie, we got like the Spiros crew. Where's Wendy at? She's not really on here too. Good morning. Good morning, guys. We got some cool beers here. Uh, I know everything is sort of backwards uh, if you're new to tuning into us, uh, but hopefully you can kind of pick up on what some of these things are here. Um, once again, a lot of our stuff comes from Tavor, which is uh, right behind us here. It's an app on your phone. You can they they send you a notification or email every single day. Uh, one to two bottles, you can like them, get it or not get it, um, look them up, it's really easy, um, but a really good way to um, increase your bottle selection and yeah. collection. And definitely. Comment and tag Tavor. Right. Yeah, if you we could. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. So, and then also, a couple of these beers are from, uh, what's that, uh, uh, what's not Tra local boys? Not, not local. 
Tacoma Boys. Tacoma Boys. Yeah. Dude, if you guys are from, if you ever travel right. up the northwest where we're from, and you ever been into a Tacoma Boys, if you haven't been, it's kid in a candy store for beer the bottle drinkers. selection. Well, I mean, we're out, if we're not in a town too. Yeah. So there's different bottles there than there are here. So a couple of these, I think this one and this one are all from there. So yeah, we had to stop. It was one of those deals. Like could have just continued to grab beers. But anyway. So a couple of these bottles you guys might be able to grab there too if they're still in season. Absolutely. Anything else on the list to talk about at all? Or well next week, uh, next week. We'll tease on next week. So double oh. mountain next week. Oh right. So we will be at the Double Mountain Tap House, the brand new one in Woodstock, uh, in Portland, which is like southeast Portland. Super stoked to be with those guys. Uh, we reached out to them. They got back to us. And so we'll be down there trying some of their beers next week. I think we're going to a Timbers game. So I'm super stoked oh, about that. Right. Dude. Um, yeah, I heard the seats are killer. I was kind of worried about it. You know, because this is like, yeah. what, Widmere standing room only or whatever. But I was talking to a lady and she's like. That's awesome. Yeah, we're in, like, the Windmere, like, club section, I think, or whatever. I have to look at the tickets. Again. Anyway, so drinking beer, watching soccer. We yeah. Both, we both love it. If you guys, I don't know if you know about that about us, but we played soccer our whole lives. So we, we love it. Definitely. If you come in here and there's soccer on TV, it's most likely on here, too. Yeah, so. for sure. All right. Let's drink some beer, huh? Sounds good to me. You want to start with the... I uh, guess. I since you brought three quarters of the selection today. <laughs> I think we're going to start with this one, which is a little bit of a surprise. We learned a, bit, a little bit about a beer that we have on draft here right now. Uh, it's number two on our board currently. Um, it could be going on our, um, our Kick the Keg today, which if you're not familiar with that, we kind of cool. explained it a little bit. Uh, discounted selections on our board on Saturdays and Sundays. So if you're around Lebanon, Albany area, definitely swing through. Um, so we have it on Vertigo as ISA. We, we realized today, Bruce is only like, what's going on? That's Stiltskin. This is no run, no wonder everybody's been loving it. Um, which is a beer that Derek and I brewed with them a while back. Um, yeah, it was our second anniversary brewing um, with them, which is yeah, it's a great beer. Uh, what it, we wanted we wanted to go for an IGA, you know, right? right an IGA, which is an Indian golden ale. Uh, also, oatmeal pale ales were something that we discussed as well, because we both really love that mouthfeel on a, a good pale. Um, but ended up settling on this. Obviously, we, we talked with brewers. They know a lot more about, you know, brewing beer and settled on this beer. And then we were, it was, it was yeah. really Yeah, good. Amarillo in the boil for the bitter back and Citra on the dry hop, right? So Citra on the dry hop, yeah. right? You definitely get that. So a nice session beer. Um, I didn't even look at the specs on this beer, but it's 4.8%. Uh, yeah, and the IBU is like 64 or 65 on the poster, I think is what we have on there. So, right. yeah, super surprised. We thought this was gone. <laughs> like, yeah. we blew through this beer super quick, and Vertigo poured like five kegs of it super quick, and people have been asking for it. Right. And then, lo and behold, in the walk in when we got the last keg from Vertigo, voila, here we are. And yeah. another, another keg. There was a little bit of confusion. I went on Untapped to try to find out. You know, an I, uh, what the in, uh, I, Indian Session Ale was on Vertigo, and it came up as a farmhouse. So that, that should have been my first clue. But um, I've had this before. If you guys haven't had this, definitely come down here and check it out. Um, a great beer. I felt, felt it was a good selection today. Definitely nice, crisp, clean, great citra in the nose. The bitterness is well balanced. And what's great about it is you can drink multiple pints and not just get hammy. <clears throat> yeah, I think one of the selling points for me is you know. We talk about an ISA, uh, Indian Session Ale. When people say Session Ale, it just refers to a low ABV, uh, so a low alcohol by volume. So um, these are really good in the summertime. We, I think we touched on these a little bit before. Yeah. But yeah, you can just crush these things, and it tastes amazing. So the low ABV, typically a Session Ale, for me, they're a little watery. You know, Can't like kind of. You know, when you're used to drinking IPAs all the time, they're really full flavored and they hit you and they linger on your palate for a long time. And so when you switch to a Session Ale, it typically seemed like a little watery to me. Uh, but this one is full flavored. I think that's the citra in the back end there that we dry yeah. hopped it with. Good morning, Mike. Joe. Joe. This will be on Kick buddy. the Keg today. Come get one. Really good, refreshing. Stilt skin. Stiltskin, spinning grain into gold. That was our exactly. That was, that was our, our, our little tag on it. Yeah, delicious. All right, good way to start the morning. Ten thirty somewhere. Ten thirty somewhere, right? 
needs to be on our shirts. I'm going to let you pour this beauty while I talk about it. What's up, Jim? Good morning, buddy. So excited to try this beer. So this is from Seven Seas Brewing out of Gig Harbor, Washington. You guys um, gotta see this label if you can check it out. It's super cool. We grew up on the Pacific Peninsula and Gig Harbor uh, was actually the last town I lived in before I moved here. Um, but these guys are doing some pretty cool stuff. They have some really great names of their beers. I think one of their Imperial IPA is called Balls Deep IPA. No. I don't know. This is a family show. <laughs> <laughs> um, so these guys, uh, this is a 14-month barrel-aged... Um, That's talking my language there. Imper wild Imperial Stout. So it's a sour stout, which you don't see very often. 9.5%. Um, yeah. nine, 9 <sighs> no IBU no, no listed, and it's a 3.77 on untapped. A little bit about 7 Cs really quickly I thought was pretty cool is they... They got their start, um, they went to go get, bought a brewery, they went into an old racquetball uh, mm -hmm. court that was out of business, and two days prior to opening, a fire started in another location right next to the building and burnt their brewery down. Oh. Yeah. So wow. then, So then they secured another location that was like twice as big, um, but still had a super small tap room that like maybe you had like eight people standing in it. Um, it they were doing like an eight barrel system, and then they started canning. They're the first Washington brewery to can, which I thought was crazy. Yeah. Because there's a lot of breweries in Washington. Uh, yeah. So anyway, now they're in like a 30,000 square foot building. It used to be a QFC, oh. uh, downtown Gig Harbor. And so was, the, so was the racquetball court in that same little... No. Oh. Different location. They didn't say, they just said in Gig Harbor. They didn't say exactly where it was. But yeah, talk about turn of events. And they, they even said in their description, like, things happen for a reason and we needed a bigger, lo we needed a bigger location and so that's what happened. This is the first wild beer I've ever tasted. I didn't know they were doing barrel aged beers. Yeah, me neither. So, I'm grateful that they are. You know, this this is like that one beer. That, remember that that bombs beer oh, that we got? Right. So super dark guys, nice and frothy, like a stout should be. Ooh, it smells super, super good. It smells like a good sour. It smells like I don't know plums. Ooh. Oh wow. It's so coffee. That, it right? is coffee. And you know what? But it's fairly subtle. I, I was just going to say, I was expecting it to be more sour than it is. It's like slightly sour. It's so good. I got to try more. There's not, you know, Shemitah down the street here had, from what I understand, had uh, a sour stout. Did, Jane, did you have that beer? You don't remember what it was like. Anyway, uh, looks like we lost our Instagram. Sorry, folks. No, you didn't lose it. It's just storage is almost full. We're not losing, we don't lose it when that happens. Oh. Sorry, guys. I didn't block the screen there. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> All right. So anyway, uh, this is – so remember that long beer that we had in Newburgh and I, yes. I tasted it? We were supposed to share it? Yeah. Pinot Noir Barrel. And, uh, oh, my God. It was Pinot Noir Barrel. And then uh, – what happened? Oh, I drank it and I was like, it gave me goosebumps. <laughs> and so then we looked, we went weeks and months trying to find that bottle again, and we finally found it. And this is it's bringing that back. It really does bring back those memories. So I was talking really to good. Mom and Brian. Oh, Dolores, you see her on here. She yeah. just she just commented talk about talking about Seven Seas. Hi, Mom. We missed her last week. Um, <laughs> She was, they were saying the goosebumps rating. Brian was saying, yeah. bring back the goosebumps rating when something gives you goosebumps. I don't really have that right now, <laughs> unfortunately. I like it when that happens, but uh, it's really good. I think the flavors are perfectly balanced. Like the, the stout's not overpowering, the tartness is all yeah, of I there. get like that cocoa nib dryness on the back, like you're like, like you were to dip your finger in cocoa powder and then lick it. So it's that like super dry. Oh, right, yeah. Bitter, bittersweet chocolate. Right, bittersweet chocolate. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Good though. Right. right here. I like it. Bruce, you need to grab a glass, buddy. I think Heather's going to want to drink probably that. <laughs> Let's see. Clutch. Clutch from, from New Belgium. Belgium. Yeah, have you had that? I haven't had oh, it. Have you had? Yeah, it's a really? dark sour. It's good. Thank yeah. you, Sean. Coming through there, buddy. Also, I wanted to, I wanted to just bust your balls a little bit. Boo! Oh, everybody. Everybody. Like, everybody. All these people. All these people. <laughs> right. Okay. So two episodes ago, um, two episodes ago, we go back to look at it, and it's blurry. The whole video is blurry. Nobody said anything. No one said anything. I don't know this. 
Derek doesn't know yeah, either. We're looking so. at a phone right now, right? So, right. So, if you guys see things that are going on, you want to, like, you know, like, clue us in. Like, I'll wipe the screen down or the, the lens down. So, <laughs> we need your help here. We're new and we're learning also. So, uh, yeah. Uh, on that note, when, when it comes to feedback, like, tell us what beers you want us to taste. Like, oh, totally. give us a list of stuff that you want to see. Like, if you yeah. guys want to see stuff. Because... We, we feed off of that, and as we're coming into you know episode nine, we're always looking for unique things to like talk about and do. And totally. So yeah, let us know. Brent, good morning. Ten, it is ten forty-five. We are drinking beer, and you're and uh, we. I think we have a tagline. We'll probably get some shirts that say that. Ten is ten thirty somewhere. Somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. That's good enough. We don't need to be, 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 be there. Next beer. I like this one. I guess. Yeah. Are we talking about it? Yeah, no, you know, I, I gotta be honest with you guys, I was a little behind. I was a little uh, behind. She didn't see the blurry either. Was it just me? Mom said she didn't see it. Desiree says it didn't happen either. On the feed, on the video, it looked on the, blurry. Oh, okay. All, okay. When, we, when we saw it back, it looked blurry. Uh, Maybe okay, not. Well, okay, well. Hey, sorry. if you guys didn't think it was blurry, then that's good. <laughs> I didn't mean to upset you guys. Like, it wasn't. Take it easy. Okay, so Heathen Brewing, they're out of. Uh, they're out of uh, Vancouver. Uh, we've been there, haven't we? Been there? Yeah, yeah we, right before they opened up their tap room. They right. Like, they just opened a winery. Did you know that? No. They just opened a winery. These guys yeah. sound pretty cool. Well, uh, obviously, they're cool. They're First of all, their IPAs are killer. Off the hook um, yeah. lineup. Their lineup there, um, which is definitely our palette. Um, they're really uh, into small batch stuff. Um, they like, they're kind of like us when it, when it comes to like testing people's palates out. So they're really up on the whole like new hops that are out here, new techniques that people are doing. Um, they're constantly doing new batches and sort of experimenting and letting people, you know, try new flavors, which is what we do, what JD is help, helpful in doing um, and putting together our specials menu. A lot of times there are flavors that people haven't had before and uh, that's really what we like, like to do as well. And when it comes to beers, I, yeah. I, I really dig that too. So if I see, oh, I got a goosebumps. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't I don't know. If you ever, been, if you ever not been, to, if you ever have been or not been to Heathen's Tap House, their list they have like forty beers on tap. Oh man! And their guest tap list, like they they carry four or five sours at all times. Oh wow! Yeah. And their sours that you don't see are there and available. Oh. So. Go check out Heathen and their food's killer. The food's awesome. By the way, this is second fermentation in the bottle. I, uh, when yeah, I, I saw that when I poured it. I saw that phone. So this is Saison de ETE. -E. I don't know. It's French. I don't know how to hear. I'll put it up there. It's backwards. Et. Yeah. De et. Saison de ete. Right. Sure. Uh, it, that's what this is. It's a it's a French style Saison. De ete. Take it easy. <laughs> Okay, so it's, it's kind of scary. French stays on. Uh, it's brewed with bread and honeysuckle, and it's aged in gin barrels. Oh. Yeah. Oh, do you see that email come through from Gigantic? I did. She said that the the pipe ranch is on its way. I forwarded it to Cody so that he knows what's up. So cool. we should be getting that here soon. So one of our favorite one of our favorite beers before we even open this place is called uh, Pipe Ranch. So if you haven't had a pipe ranch, it's from Gigantic out of Portland. It's a gin barrel aged IPA. So every time we see gin barrel aged, we're always like, ooh, let's have that. We just had one from Bad yeah. Head, I think we talked about that last week. Yeah, so good. So this is gin barrel aged. It's got honeysuckle, retinomyas in it as well. Uh, it's 4.9% ABV, 22 IBUs, and uh, it rates a 3.72 on untapped. Yeah, hazy. Can't see through it. Hazy. Unfiltered. Barrel aged beers usually are. Well, yeah, but Saisons are normally yeah. really clean, clean looking. Yeah, true. And this is darker. It's almost like a red wine barrel, almost. Mm. Ooh, spicy. Gin up front, big time. So you don't get gin barrels very often because gin isn't usually aged in barrels. So to find a gin barrel is a rare thing, which is why we super get super excited about it. But when it is aged in barrels, it's in a whiskey barrel. Right. It's always second use barrels right. in gin, which is kind of interesting. This is really, what do you really think about it? It's dry. Is this hopped at all? I don't know. Like, it almost has like a medicine flavor to it. The front. Yeah. It's a. Uh, but it is dry. Hops. Slightly sour, not overly tart. You get that farmhouse saison, that that yeast. So you're feeling you get that 
It's dry to me. Like, like a super gr- dry. You know what tastes like a green apricot? Like a crunchy apricot. <laughs> you know? The unripe. Yeah, and the skin is there for yeah. the dryness. I like the mouthfeel on it. I like the unfilteredness of it. That's good. It is really ginny now that it's sitting on my palate. Right. Like I smell it. When you smell it, I smell the gin up front. Like pine. Oh, you got He's real, so he's really sensitive. <laughs> real sensitive to gin. Okay, real. Bad some bad experiences with gin. Yeah. Because of this he, had a bad, he, had a bad, he had a bad brother, bad mid brother that didn't. <laughs> when he was younger. 21st I just, birthday. It was my 21st birthday. Yeah, he got sick on gin and tonics, and uh, now it's, he's real sensitive to that smell. It's all good. I still like gin beers. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really good beer. I don't know. I think it's interesting. It's really good. If you, have, you find a bottle of this, I'd pick it up. It's different than anything I've ever had before. For, yeah, for some of the gin beers that me and you have had, not the top of the list. You know, It's not real beers. oaky. Yeah. Right? So, but that, I think that what we like or what we're used to is an American oak, like that soft vanilla oaky flavor, which I think they might be using. This is definitely, you can taste the French oak barrel, which is that more wine, yeah. spicy oak that's not soft. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and it finishes dry, like mm-hmm. really, really dry. Like a dry Chardonnay would finish, just super tanniny on the tongue for me. So, I don't know. Different. Glad we tried it. Yeah, me too. Of what brewery? Feral. Oh, heat it. No, heat it. Okay, yeah, yeah. Heat it. I'm going to finish all these beers. <clears throat> Later. Off camera. Did I have a sad face, Mom? <laughs> all right, next beer. Up our alley. Pure IPA. All right. Oh, which reminds me, Mug Club members, if you haven't been in... To play our little, be a part of our uh, beer challenge, whatever it is called. <laughs> Battle of the beers, duh. Battle of the beers, come in Thursday through Sunday. We always have two new beers for you to try. Put your vote on the board. Yeah, we're close. Down to the one. Right, we've got, excuse me, three weeks left. So come down there, there's still some time this week. We've got really good beers. They're really, it's actually, you should try and do this today. Oh, okay. You don't know what they are. No. Do you? Oh, it's, they're so similar. It's like, you don't even know. So we do a blind tasting for our mug members and then they narrow it down to one beer and we buy those kegs and we, we discount it for them. Every year we do this around March Madness time. We're a little behind right now, but you know. Yeah, so anyway. Just Desiree, it's different. interesting that you asked that. We have collage too in our refrigerator, our bottle cooler. Yeah. And we drank it two, we, two we, weeks ago. We drank it on the show. Yeah, we drank it on the show. I don't remember what show. It was like two or three weeks ago. Well, it would have been three weeks ago, right? Because we were at Barrel like two weeks ago. Right, right, right. So three weeks ago or so. Three weeks ago. Yeah, check it out. Man, it's amazing. It's delicious. We have it in our cooler. Come it's buy amazing. One. And you can't, it's it's limited. Like the case think. we got, I think, was one of few. So. Yeah, so. Yeah, that's a, that's an amazing beer. All right, Upslope Brewing. Upslope Brewing out of one of our states that has some of our favorite beers, Boulder, Colorado. Uh, these guys are pretty cool. Their story is great. Um, this is a uh, Imperial IPA, 90 IBU. Uh, comes in at 10% ABV. It's a doozy. Yeah. Um, and it's untapped. It's 3.92. So it's high on tapped. Okay. Uh, each barrel is brewed with six pounds of unique hops. Um, these guys started in 2008. So the upslope refers to what is it? When the warm and wet airstream from the Gulf of Mexico hits the uh, airstream from Colorado, it creates an upslope, which creates snowfall which is how they got their name. These guys are super outdoorsy people. Okay. Well, they're from Colorado. From That's Colorado, cool. right. Um, they love Sounds to like skate. thunder to me. Isn't that what thunder and lightning is all about? Sure. That's just, this is the story that they... Snow. Yeah, this is the story that they, they, they put on their deal. So, anyway. Okay. Super supportive of environments and nonprofit organizations. Um, I've never been... We haven't had any of their beers, but we do carry stuff from Colorado a lot. I, so. don't, I don't see them in... I don't know if they get distributed here. Yeah, like Avery is one of our favorites. Boulder, or uh, Boulder, you know, like, uh, Brewing is one of our favorites, too. So. Uh, Boulder Beer Company. Yeah. So anyway, I'm, I'm excited to try this one. This is super... looks super orangey, yeah. hazy. Uh, um, uh, Arlie. Arlie was asking about the... Blindfold again. Oh, we, didn't do that. we were gonna do it this last time, but it just didn't. We gotta have somebody who picks a beer that we don't know what it is. Mm, I think JD would be okay with that. Yeah, 
So maybe okay. next next time we so we're from uh, Double Mountain next week. Um, our ne- the next time we're here, we'll blindfold it. We'll just okay. the whole thing. No, 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 at least one beer, yeah, right? Okay, Maybe yeah. both of us would be blindfolded and JD yeah. will pick the beer. And yeah, 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 I think so too. That's good. That would be kind of fun. Maybe yeah. she'll get some input from some of the other Mug Club members. <laughs> she's, she's going like this. <laughs> good morning, Deanne. True. Good morning. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, this is up our alley. I've been oh, waiting yeah. for this. Super hoppy, pineapple Yeah. Yep. Sweet, tropical. Yeah, citrusy. Gosh, this is going to be good. Malty. It smells malty to me too. Mm. So this is brewed with New Zealand hops. My favorites. Those Southern Hemisphere hops are delicious. Yeah, this is good. This is really wow. IBU is definitely there. I believe ninety. Yeah. I believe in the ninety here. I'm gonna take Some of the beers that come in IBU being International Bitter Unit, they'll rate themselves in these high like nineties and hundreds. And you drink them. We've talked about this before, and it just doesn't doesn't hold up as far as what they say it is. This one does. This yeah, absolutely. Is, I think this could be even higher. To be honest yeah. with you, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Last time we were, we were talking about a beer that rated some some way up there, and we we're like, this doesn't taste like it. This is a great juicy IPA, but lingers on the palate, dryness wise. Yeah, I like it. I like it because normally Imperial IPAs are just too sweet for me. Um, and this has enough of a like dry, hoppy back to it that really sort of helps it balances that out. Does it taste ten percent to you? It doesn't really to me. It's heating up my inside. Is, <laughs> Is it? <laughs> I'm a little deeper into the glass than you are, but yeah, I can definitely feel the alcohol. So, I don't smell it so much. So up up slow brewing, Boulder, Colorado. If you go to Colorado, Colorado is, they have a lot of good breweries. I mean, those guys are, that state's killing it with beers. Yeah. I'm pounding this already. You're getting it? I gotta gotta work. I know you do. I know. I'm going to be organizing my office today. Good time, Jack. All right. Moving on. Cheers. All right. I got another one. Phew. glasses are... Are you going to be okay? I'm going to be good. Excited about this one. Wander, huh? So these guys were at the brew fest that we were just at, the Sour Brew Fest. We didn't try anything from them. Heather Yeah, did. Heather came home. Were they there, them. though? That's the thing. Oh, that's a good point. Right. We were, I don't uh, think they were. We walked all the way around it. That was a frustrating thing about it. We did give them some props last time, but I'm, I'll give them a little feedback here. Totally do it. VIP, well, right, we brought VIPs, it was Friday, it worked out better for us, and VIP is a lot better for us. When we go to Brewfest, we want to really make connections for you guys, um, for our customers that are here. Um, we make connections and we're able to get some things that typically other people won't. So everything's about relationship, right? So we always kick the, the VIP, so we go on Friday, and they list all these beers, or you guys list all these beers if you're listening, uh, and... You guys had all these beers there to sell us on coming, and then we get there, and there was only like maybe half, if not you know, half the beers were available to VIP. It was really cool to be able to talk to everybody and communicate to all the brewers that yeah. were there. But on the other hand, it would have been really nice to you know try all the beers that were listed on the advertising. Um, not to say that that wasn't probably the best brew fest I've ever been to. Yeah, right. The beer selection was still great. It was still stellar. Yeah. But... You know, don't sell me on what's going to be there. Yeah, don't charge me more for VIP and then sell short on what's available. Right, I guess so. I was Wander just... Brewing, uh, this is a beer called Peach Millie. Uh, this is a sour. Um, it's got European specialty hops in it. It's a 4.4 ABV, so super low ABV. It's a 5 IBU, which is traditional for any sour beer. Really, no, not, not a lot of bitterness in it. Uh, it's 3.85 on Untapped. These guys are like family owned since 2013, super like big on wild fermented beers, that's their thing, they're big into blending, wow look at the color. Yeah, it's like white. Um, Chad and Colleen, um, husband and wife own this place, met at uh, University of Iowa, Um, he has an engineering degree, went to the Beer's Guild, worked for Hillard's Brewing in Seattle, that's how he got his start. And then, uh, so the wandering, the whole story behind Wanderer is they, they believe in everybody kind of being unique to themselves. 
and that the journey of life is kind of a wander and not to like follow everybody else's footpath, you know, just to do do what you do. Let me reach Amen. up here and block and turn my phone and block you guys again. The journey, huh? That's on you. Yep. Nice. So this is a peach sour, basically. Nice. I like it. It looks like it looks like peach sour. Yeah. Look at look at the it, the color is like applesauce color. Yeah, like white almost. Yeah. Not like a slight peach color, like white peaches. Ooh. <laughs> Funky. Smells funky. Really funky. And acidic. Like funky like, what do you, how do you, what, let me describe that smell. You, I mean, like how do you describe funky like a sweet, rotten foot smell? <laughs> 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 I, don't, I, don't, I, don't I don't know about rotten feet. I've never smelled a rotten foot. I guess I haven't either. But. You, I get, my gosh, I don't know if I'm Cheese? Is there a cheese uh, funk to that? No. No. Like a sweet raspberry cheese or something? Maybe. I don't even know. I got nothing there. I want to try it. No help. No help yeah, with no that problem. description. <laughs> no. Whew. Ooh. That's sour. Wow. Super tart. If you can tell by our faces. Um, Still funky. They described this, this. One of the descriptions on this beer was uh, sour warhead. Oh. That like... Mm. Acidic powder that they put on like anything sour that you buy, that flavor that you get, that mm -hmm. super. I don't super know about tart. Warhead. Those are those are sour. abrasive. Those are tart. This is good. Yeah. The mouth feel is like almost buttery, like like on your tongue when you're done, like right after you finish. It's really silky. It's oh. almost oily. Yeah, it is kind of that way, oh. huh? Yeah, that's interesting. I do get peaches, unripe peaches, mm -hmm. in this for sure. Kind of like spring, like florally. Mm -hmm. In the nose after I drink it, I, I, I get like spring spring flowers, like kind of like, yeah. you know what I mean? Which is kind of <laughs> douchebaggy, really. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Definitely like a, I'm a wine snob, right? I guess, oh. we're, I guess we are what we are. It's got a lot. I'd have to, you know what? I'd, I'd like to just to warm up a little bit. I agree. Drink a little bit more. We'll have an opportunity. If you guys are around, a lot of times on Saturday, um, you know, a few few of the guys come down here and taste some of these beers. But a lot of times, there's still some left over. So if you come down um, Saturday afternoon, Derek's behind the bar typically, or one of us is here anyway, and um, there's still some left over. So you can try some of the beers that you've heard us talk about. So if you're in the area of Lebanon, definitely uh, swing through here and see. Um, about trying some of these beers. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough to try. I mean, like as we're getting into this, it's so tough. Tough. So tough to try sour beers and give an initial like description of it because they change so much. Like I want, we and we tell our customers that like don't just drink a couple sips. Like simmer on this a little bit. Get a glass. I wish we could have more time. You know what I mean with some of these, but yeah. We'll give you our initial out of the gate. It is funky. I like that smell. I know that I, I, our smell and taste and flavor, I know I smell that as rotten, sweet, rotten feet smell or whatever. It's not a, it's, it's not an unpleasant thing, unfortunately, which is sort of strange to even say out loud. So wild fermented stuff <laughs> is going to be different from any part of the country. It's, and it's unique to taste stuff from different areas, and, and this is great. So. I, love I like it. it. I love it. Wander's in Bellingham, by the way. I didn't tell you that. Oh. Bellingham, Washington. I like to go up there. Been, it's been a long time. So you I lived up there. there. It's, a, it's always a cool town. It's got a little, what yeah. is it, a university there? Or, right? Yeah, there is a new, uh, Western, yeah, Western. Western University is in Bellingham. It's always got a cool little character. Bellingham's awesome. Uh, different people, taste buds, they taste different. Like this. That is true. All right. All right. I think, uh, I think we're about there. Where are we at here? Yeah, it's about normal. About 35 minutes. So, um... Thanks, like for, it. thanks for joining us. Like us, share us individually on your page, whatever. Yeah, we'll be at Double Mountain next week. Excited about that. So April 15th, also put that on your calendars right now. If you're in the area, definitely swing by Conversion, Con Conversion Brewing and Growler Cafe here um, and help donate to an awesome cause. So thanks for, for joining us. Yes, Kari, thank you so much. Yeah, have a wonderful weekend. 
And uh, cheers. We'll see you next week. Yep.